in effect and in force, in full effect. Christ did not come to, come to do away with God's law. You mean I'm supposed to be supposed to have hair on your head? If you're able to grow hair, you're supposed to have it. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Neither are you supposed to shave off the corner of your beard. You, if you for whatever beard you supposed you able to grow, you are supposed to let it grow. You're not supposed to be walking around with a goatee, a chin strap, right. just a mustache. Right. No, you a man. You are supposed to grow your beard. That's, right. that's what that's what you supposed to be learning in your Christian church. And I know it ain't being taught in there because I come from the Christian church. You are not being taught the proper way to serve your God. That's right. You are not being taught the proper way to serve your God. You are being taught lies. Lie after lie after lie after lie. It's the commandments. Give me Revelation 14 and 12. You teach faith, faith, faith. Grace, grace, grace. But what is grace? What is faith? How do you show, how do you show that you believe in the Lord? Because when I look, when I looking at the Christian church, being coming from the Christian church, it's not being taught there. You're not being taught how to how to serve your God. You're not being taught to show how you believe in the Lord. Right. Read that. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Bring it out. Here is the patience of the saints. Here is the patience of the saints. This is what we're waiting on. This is what gives us uh, a peace in a tur tur uh, turbulent world, in a chaotic world. Read. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. So it says, here are they that keep the commandments of God. Read. And the faith of Jesus. You can't separate the two. You have to have, you have to believe in the Lord, the black Messiah, That's and right. you have to keep the commandments of God. You can't separate the two. They are one, they are one in the same. That's right. Christ came teaching the law. Why is it that we going into the church and we not being taught God's law? Why? Why are we continue going over there? Since I see you not in your head, why why you continue going into a church where you're not being taught the proper way to live before your God? Why is that? We just going through the motions to say that we fear God, but no, when you look when you compare what's going on in the Christian church to the Bible, it's not there. Right. It's not there. So what you're doing, this, this is what you call the blind leading the blind. When Christ come back, he's going to say, I never knew you. That's right. He's going to tell you straight in your face, I never knew you. Well, Lord, Lord, I, I, I went and uh, I gave my tithes. I gave my offering. He's going to say, I never knew you because you was not keeping my commandments. You wasn't doing what I told you to do. Right. We're the only nation on the earth that go and serve a God that don't look like us. Bring it out. Why is that? Because we've been destroyed as a people. We have been stripped from our nationality. What I got you holding? Read that again. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. It says here, the, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Give me Matthew 22 and verse 36. Because one of the things that a lot of our Christian brothers say, well, he, he gave us two commandments. To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. He, he replaced the law. Let's see what the let's see what that truly means. Let's see what that truly means. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, chapter 22, and verse 36. Read it out. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Notice. This young man asked Christ, what is the great commandment in the law? He didn't say what are the commandments. He said, what is the great commandment in the law? Read. Jesus said unto him. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. So he said that you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. What does that mean? Get Deuteronomy. Hold this and get Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Let's get Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Let's see what Christ was quoting. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, and verse 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? Notice, we know that Christ was from the tribe of Judah. He was an Israelite, and he was speaking to his people. And now we're reading in Deuteronomy what he was He said, speak unto, now speak to Israel. Israel is you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's Read. right. 
but to fear the Lord God, thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. This is the same thing Christ quoted in uh, Matthew 22 and 36. That we, that we love the Lord thy God with all our heart and soul. Now, this is going to be more specific as to what he's telling us to do. Read. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep the Sabbath day holy on the seventh day of the week. That's Not right. the first day of the week. That's right. Christ didn't change that. The apostles didn't teach that. Bring it out. But today we're following the customs of the so-called white man. We, we're following the customs of our oppressor. Right. What our oppressor put upon us. Right. You are not following the laws of God by going to these Christian churches. Go back to Matthew 22. Matthew 22 and verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment and the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So this is, he said, the, he said, the question was, what is the great commandment? So what Christ answered is, is a summary of the, the first through the fourth commandments. The commandments we're supposed to keep that pertain to the most high God. Right. Keeping the Sabbath day holy. Having no other gods before him. Right. News flash. Going into the Christian church, you are serving another God. Right. Right. That Christian cross was put on us by our slave masters. Yes, you right. are serving your oppressor. You are not serving God. Right. That's what we are here to show you and to teach you. Whether you hear or forbear, you gotta hear this. You gotta hear the truth. Sometimes the truth hurts. Right. But you've been following, you've been you've been an usher, you've been a deacon for 30 years. You are in the wrong place. Right. You are serving God incorrectly. Read. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So the second commandment is to love your neighbor as, th as thyself. That's not talking about giving the, the random beggar on the street money. No, that's not what that's going into. It says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You have to know what love is to understand this scripture. It says you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Meaning you, as you keep in the commandments, you have, you have the consideration of your brother. Your, your black brother in your mind. Bring it out. You're keeping the commandments to be a light to your brother. That's right. And it's not just you giving giving um giving money to the beggar that's on the street. Right. Giving money to the homeless. No, that's not what it's going into. Right. Read. On these two commandments hang all the law. Wait a minute. Read that again. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. Christ is being very specific. He said, on these two commandments. Hang all the law and the prophets. Yes. If I hang my pants up in the shirt, if I hang my pants up on a hanger in a closet, my pants don't go away. That's right. The hanger supports my pants. That's right. So what Christ is telling us is that the motivation for us, the mo one of the motivations of us keeping the commandment is that we we consider that by us breaking the commandment, we doing it. We we disappointing our God. And we doing a disservice to our brother. Cause we're showing right. him a bad example. That's we're right. teaching him a wrong example. We're teaching him the wrong way to keep the commandments. Right. Give me that in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Modest apparel. Yes, sir. Because one thing, we have to do what the Bible says to do. It's, it's quite too often that we see, we going in the Christian church, we see our sisters going in there with tight, tight dresses on. Right. Showing their figure. Walking right next to their husband. But that's against the Bible. The Bible tells us, tells the woman to wear modest apparel. That's right. Meaning you're not showing your body off. You're not showing your cleavage. You're not showing your legs. You're not showing your, your, your camel toe. You're not showing off your body to a man that's not your husband. That's right. But yet, day in and day out, we see our sisters going into the church doing these things. Read that. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also... That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Well, women are supposed to be adorning themselves in modest apparel. That's right. Modest apparel. Just standing here for what, 30 minutes? I've seen women come out of the church and go into the church where you can see their figure. That's not according to the Bible. That's, right. That's not no. according to God. That shows that you are not being taught the laws of God. That's you are not right. being taught how you're supposed to be according to the scriptures. Right. 
you are being led astray. Read. With shamefacedness and sobriety. With shamefacedness and sobriety. Many of these women that's going in this church, they ain't shamefaced. They quick to get in the man's face and tell him he wrong. That's right. You ain't going to do nothing. You can't tell me nothing. But then they go in the church on a Sunday and it's all, I'm, they all holy. But during the week, they cursing their husband out at home. Right. Bring it out. Being evil. Right. Uh, got road rage. All type of the stuff like that. Come Gossiping. on now. Read, huh? Gossiping. Gossiping. Talking about it. Talking about everybody in the church. Then going to church and smiling in their face. And say, hey, sister, I ain't. I, I was thinking about you all. No, you wasn't. You weren't thinking about it. You lying. You was talking about it. That's right. Read. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Basically, what this is saying, your salvation ain't got nothing to do with your dress. Right. Well, no, let me say that again. Let me correct that. Your salvation ain't got nothing to do with you wearing your Sunday best. That's right. Because there is a dress code according to the Bible. That's right. There is a dress code. But it's not what you're wearing to go into this Christian church. It's not your Sunday best. Right. You are out of line and out of order. You are out of line and out of order. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.